Hey everybody, Dave here from Dave Tries to Fix Stuff, channel dedicated to the repair, restoration, and resurrection of broken stuff. Uh, today's episode, we are going to be checking out this uh, mid-60s Silvertone acoustic guitar. Um, it needs a little bit of work still left. Uh, we'll be going through everything that I've done to it already, and uh, we'll also be fixing this bridge and getting it set back up and strung up and uh, ready to play. So if you want to join me on that adventure, by all means, stick around. Okay, so like I said, this is a uh, what I believe to be a mid-60s uh, Silvertone acoustic guitar. Uh, this is definitely one of those, uh, one of those student models. Um, not anything that's worth any real amount of money. It's dusty a little bit still. I've had it in the closet for a while. Um, my son actually picked this up from a pawn shop for, I, I think he said it was like five or ten bucks. Um, it was not anywhere near playable at that point. Um, when he brought it to me, it had, the top of it was basically being held on by this, uh, what is that, is that a bridge or a saddle? Bridge and saddle here. That is the string holder or whatever. God, I should probably look that up if I'm going to be doing videos like this, huh? <laughs> anyway, um, this thing was basically holding on the top. All of the edges in here had already come loose. The glue had come loose. Um, it was hanging on by basically next to nothing. And there were several um, Bra uh, braces and brackets inside of this thing that had come loose. Uh, some were loose, some were completely missing. So they'd come, come undone and, and been missing. And uh, this is one of those um, projects where I wish that I would have started this particular channel prior to me doing the work on this so that I could have documented it a little bit better because this was one that I did some uh, a lot of work on just to get it to the point where it was put back together and in one piece for the most part. Um, and I'm fairly proud of how it turned out because I had never done anything like this before on any kind of guitar, especially an acoustic one. God, I got a lot of stuff still out of my workbench here. Um, but it would have been something really good to, to chronicle. Um, in looking at it, I mean, you can, if you look closely, you can see that how I got it glued back on is not perfect. There's a little bit of a, a lip here, a ridge. Um, but, you know, up on top it matches and going throughout most of it it matches. I don't know if the wood has expanded or contracted or what, you know, how it ended up uh, being off like this. I probably could have uh, clamped it a different way, but all I had were just normal, regular, everyday clamps. I think I have about a dozen of them. So, I mean, it wasn't even something I had, I had thought about when I did this, you know, clamping it just at one end and then gluing the rest of it. Then I realized that was going to create a problem because I'd have sections that didn't have glue or I'd have, or I would have glue that was keeping it separated. So I decided I did need to do it all in one shot. And this is kind of how it ended up because I just didn't have the proper tools to, to do it. So, but, you know, again, for a little guitar, what, what, what can you do? Um, what I'm really proud of, and I don't even know if you'll even ever be able to see this, but the brackets that are in here, um, let's see if I can get some light on that. Like the brackets that are in this thing, the braces that are, are you know, along the back and on, and, and on the back of the guitar, up in on the back of the back side of it, these were all things, I mean, like I said, most of them were actually missing when I got it, and I had some, uh, I'm not sure what I used if I used maple or what, but I had some some pieces of dowel, some like half inch by one inch, uh, they're not really furring strips because they're thicker than furring strips, but they're definitely just some pieces of wood that I had that were hard wood that I think I got from either a hobby store or I might have gotten from, from Lowe's or something, I'm not sure, but I cut them to the correct length and then um, got, uh, you know, the, how they were supposed to look from the one or two that were still left in there. And I just used sandpaper and, you know, Dremel tool and, you know, whatever tools I needed to do to get them carved into the, the correct shape and, and, and all that and got them all glued back in there. And I am very happy with the end result. So 
Um, I think this turned out pretty good. I think the the neck does not have an adjustable truss rod. Not, I don't think. I know for a fact it does not have an adjustable truss rod, but it is straight. Uh, this is. I think this is one of those ones that may have been made by Dan Electro, um, and I think it has the just the steel rod actually glued into the neck itself, which is keeping it straight. Um, the frets are tiny frets, but you know they work. I mean, this, this is like pieces of wire across here, but they're they still have plenty of, of height on them, so I'm I'm happy with that. Um, at this point, I mean, you can you can also see that there's graffiti that you know whoever had this before put on here. I don't know how well that's going to show up in the light, but. Uh, there's, you know, just bits of graffiti and stuff that were on here that I never did end up getting. I got most of it off as much as I could using alcohol and, and whatever else methods I could, but I didn't want to, you know, start removing finish. Um, down here, there's, I don't know what was on this, but there's a, it's a fairly straight line where it looks like the finish had, has kind of been eaten away a little bit and comes down here on this side too, but... I mean, this was not a, I'm, I can't say if it was a well-loved guitar, but it was definitely not a well-taken-care-of guitar. There's also some cracks in the wood in the back, but, I mean, for a 50-year-old guitar that was not taken care of, it's surprisingly, in, in surprisingly good shape, so. Anyway, um, what today is, oh, we even have a nut on here, so that's always good. Uh, what I want to do today is I'm going to get this bridge put back on here and uh, get everything set up on this and make it playable again. This is the original bridge that came on here. Um, I honestly, it's been, I've had this guitar like this for like two years and I don't remember what the problem was with the bridge that was on here. I don't know if it was plastic or what, I imagine it probably was. I don't know if it had come out already or if it was broken or what, but it's, at one point I, had a, I actually uh, took this bridge and uh, I sanded it down flat. Why did I do that? I don't recall why, but I, I sanded it down flat. I know the idea that I had though was to, I was going to originally use like a nail oops, across this, like I don't know, like an 18 penny nail or something and you know cut off the head and the pointy end and then you can file in fret grooves and you can actually get a little bit of, of uh, compensation in there to to try and make it um, you know uh, intonation be correct for for each uh, string but then I realized you know you can buy compensated bridges like this for nothing and I got you know I got a pack of five of them for I got these five of them for you know I don't know couple bucks so didn't make sense to me to, to go through all the whole thing with the with a nail but what I'm left with at this point is having to get this thing mounted to this and what I'm gonna have to do is get this thing set in here um, you know just hold it on top and I need I'm gonna have to outline where I want it to be you know, using a, a really sharp pencil or something, outline where I want it to be in this. Um, and then I'll be able to use a drill bit and a drill press to, to drill down inside of that to, to clear out, you know, to, to swish cheese out all the, you know, what I need to have removed. Um, and then I should be able to use files or, you know, whatever I need to do to, you know, a, a chisel or whatever to clean it up and get this thing to set down in there. Um, as far as where I would need to have, as far as height, what I would need to have as far as height, I am going to get some strings that I'll put into the, the, uh, the holder here, get it strung up, and I can look at it from the side to see, you know, what the string height is going to be, and then measure up from there by, you know, raising the string or lowering the string and seeing exactly how high it is, you know, get it to the height that I want it uh, over the fretboard and take a measurement right there where the, where the bridge is supposed to go and that'll give me an idea of how high this is supposed to be and then that will give me my measurement of how far down I need to actually drill into this to get this to set how I want it. 
Um, <clears throat> and I, I mean, I, I can go down just a little bit too, because I can always uh, take this and sand the end of this off until I get it to the height that I want it. So there's a couple of different ways that I can work at it. It's just going to take a little bit of trial and error, but that is uh, where I am on this, and that is how I'm going to get that completed and put back into the spot it's supposed to be in. And then uh, I can get this strung up and get it playable. So let me uh, let me go find some old strings and um, feed them in here, and I'll start getting some measurements of that. All right, so I've got the <clears throat> I've got a couple of strings on here. Um, these are these are from like a, a pack of electric strings I got from when I bought a used guitar. It was I mean, <laughs> they just the pack was there with the guitar. And uh, I was already missing two strings, so I'm not worried about these at all. Anyway, um, I've got these in here, and I've actually got the, I got the bridge put <clears throat> in place where it's supposed to go on here, measured up from the 12th fret. You know, you, I did a measurement from the nut down to the 12th, 12th fret, and then 12th fret to here should be the, basically the same distance. There's a little bit of... Um, play in it there but that's kind of where it should be um, anyway I had uh, I have these on here and they're roughly well sort of roughly in tune I mean they're not but close enough to where I've got some tension on here and with the bridge in place looking at this thing I mean I actually have I don't want to do that I have up until about the 12th fret because the thing is this is fairly flat here and then it's got a little bit of going right through these these four frets um, same with this one. this one about to the 10th fret will do that and then it uh, starts having trouble and I can I can do a fret job on this I don't think that'll be too big of a problem, um, but I don't know how, I, if I did it, I think I'd have to completely remove these frets and put some larger frets on here, which means I'd have to cut the slots again, and I don't know if I want to mess with that with this. I think this will just be like an open chord guitar, just meant to, you know, play chords up to about the, maybe the seventh fret, and that's going to be it. Um, but what that's telling me, though, the fact that I have that much height in these is that it with just this on here without the compensated uh, saddle on here is that there's not much room at all uh, that needs that this needs to go up so I'm gonna have to actually bury this thing down almost even with where this is so that's gonna it's gonna be quite a bit of of knurling out there or quite a bit of sanding off oops, of the saddle itself and so I'm trying to decide what I, what I want to do if I want to. I think what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to sand this thing on a sander and get it, get as much of this taken off as possible to where I'm only going down not even an eighth of an inch into this thing. Because I am going to glue this in to the saddle, but I don't want to have to take a lot of, uh, I don't want to, to, you know, air it, you know, eat out a lot of the, the wood from this piece of saddle uh, saddle wood here so um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing start sanding this thing and then uh, and then I'll do a, a drawing around this and then I'll, I'll get it onto the drill press and we'll start drilling it out so um, okay I just wanted to show real quick that I got this thing um, I got it outlined and all that and kind of colored in everywhere where I wasn't going to cut so the the light part on this fits this exactly so I just need to hog out all that stuff right there and that'll be good for that so
Um, this is the original bridge that came with it, and I was trying to remember why I didn't just use this bridge and what it was. I was I was doing some um, research on this, and actually I found out that this is a Silvertone 605, which it could have been made anywhere from the late 1940s through to like 1970. I'm pretty sure this is the 1960s though. I'm, I'm just because of the style of the uh, the tailpiece and the headstock and the way the silver tone is written on the on the headstock. But this um, this saddle was originally all just all wood, and the, the not, there were notches in it that, so that the strings could go across. And I kind of remember now the reason I didn't use it that way is that there was a piece of it on the end that had been broken off, and so it wasn't there were a couple a string or two that wasn't being held. So I just sanded it down even with that particular break, with you know, and the idea is that I'm going to replace the top of this with the uh, with the with the compensated bridge. So. All right, so I've got this thing <clears throat> basically hogged out, and you know, for the most part, as flat as I'm going to be able to get it. It's far from perfect, but you know, I'll be able to clean it up a little bit once I get this thing, this piece glued in here. Uh, I also got this um, uh, sanded down. This this is the size of what it was originally, and I sanded it down to there, which should be about right. Um, you won't be able to use wood glue. I actually have some Gorilla Glue in here. This will, this should theoretically bond the the plastic of this to the wood. Um, it's I've used it before. It's pretty serious glue. Uh, the thing is, is you, it, it needs a catalyst though. You can't just put it on like wood glue. You actually need to wet the surfaces of what it is you're going to be utilizing it on. So I've actually wet this rag, and I'm gonna. You can see that it's you know hard. I need to squeeze the water into the little cavity here and make it wet in there. And then what I will do is I took the top off of this and I'll just squeeze this up to the top until it just barely hits the top, and then I can I want to be careful not to get too much because this stuff actually expands a little bit once it uh, once it cures and I don't want it to expand so much that I won't be able to clean this thing up so yeah this is a mess fun stuff okay so I got just a little bit there I'm going to put this down into here, try to keep as much of that off there as possible. We will press that down in there and then I need to Give it some tension. So to accomplish that, I've got I need to keep this upright. Right as right as possible. I don't want to have it, you know, start to cave over to one side or the other. 
but that should theoretically do it. Um, this thing should be good in about two hours, so we will uh, give it we'll give it two hours to cure, and then uh, we'll come back and take a look at it and and see how it ends up. Okay, so I got it. Uh, I got it glued in here for the most part. I've actually already taken a razor blade. The glue did kind of, I guess I should have recorded that. That would have been a good idea. You can kind of see right here. I don't know how well that comes up on the camera, but there's a little bit of glue here that we can kind of get off of there a little bit. Just trying to, you know, I had a little bit of residue from the, the, tape that I had on here as well. I just used some uh, Goo Gone and clean that up. So I would, this isn't 100%, I mean it's only been sitting here for about an hour and a half. It may not be completely cured yet. But for the most part it is. Um, enough to where I can work on it a little bit further. Now you can see um, I still have areas on this where the old finish has kind of faded out. Um, I was thinking about getting some ebony. I have some ebony stain somewhere, but because of the fact that there's a lot of glue on this, it probably won't accept stain. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a Sharpie and uh, see what that does as far as, you know, getting this uh, looking good and, and a little bit newer again. So we're going to use this and see what we can get, get done with it. I've already done a little bit here, but colored a little bit on here. I guess I can do a little bit more and we'll see how it turns out. I'm going to start off with just the uh, just the part that is not that hasn't been sanded. I'm just going to do this other part first and then we'll work from there and see what we get. that I'm going to do is I'm going to rub off the excess here. You can see, you know, it is coming off there a little bit. Yeah, this is kind of an old rag, but I don't really care. It's not going to hurt anything to do this. And essentially, what I'm trying to do is the parts of this that have faded out should accept the ink of the Sharpie pretty well while the stuff that still has a finish on it can reject it a bit when I kind of rub off the excess so it you know makes it a lot darker while the extra stuff that wouldn't be on the uh, on the stained part comes off pretty easily so that's the gist of what I'm trying to accomplish anyway. Okay, so on the parts of it that have been stained before, it's actually turned out okay. Now, Here's going to be the tougher part. I don't know how this is going to. Here, let's, let's. This is another one of these, real quick. Let's see what happens if I do a little bit of marking on the bottom of that and then rub it off real quick. Comes off a little bit, but not a lot. I imagine it's. I might be able to, you know, if I get. Because I'm going to try and keep it off of the plastic as much as possible while I fill all this in. But if it does end up, I just realized this thing's a little off center too. But that's fine. I mean, this thing can be, we're going to be moving it around a little bit. Um, but if I do get it on here, I'm hoping that if I use the goof off to, to get it off of that, it'll still stay on the, it'll still stay on the, uh, on the wood. 
you know, I'm just going to go for it. We'll see what happens. Well, that's not too bad. I mean, I can get some goof off and see if I can get a little bit more of that off of there, but for the most part, it came off pretty easy. So it doesn't want to come off quite as easy, so I'm going to need to have a camera there. But again, God, I'm like a bull in a china shop, that's what my dad used to say. Okay, so let's get uh, some goo, goo gone. I said goof off, I meant goo gone. And we will get just a touch of it on here. And this really isn't glue, but I imagine I could probably also use isopropyl alcohol. Would probably take this off of this too, but you know what? That's good enough. And then now uh, now that we have most of it off like that, then what I can do is I can take my scraper <laughs> all right so that looks uh I think that looks pretty gosh darn good, actually, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's still a spot down there, but you know what? I'm not even going to worry about that. God, that's getting really piddly, so. All right, so I've got it in there, and I'm looking at the... Uh, I mean, I'm, the action's a little bit higher than I I like it to be normally, but uh, I could also come back in and actually um, sand down, file down the tops of these things to make them a little bit lower and still have the compensation on there. But I mean, it's really it's not it's not that completely out of the ordinary high. I mean, it's not, uh, I mean, at least it's letting us use the higher frets. So I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, this thing's not going to let me not gonna show anything, so this is a tuner that I've got, but So that's act right there, that's intonated pretty good. And that's high, so I actually need to Yeah, 
don't know why I'm doing this with these strings on here because these are electric strings. I have to change these out anyway. Should, uh, should be pretty close. I mean, with a setup, I mean, you can see right there. I don't know. It's going to end up being a little bit of a slant, which I've seen before. But I mean, I'll see if I can. I don't even know if I have any acoustic strings, any steel acoustic strings. I know I have some nylon ones, but this one is a steel string guitar. Um, so I'm going to have to look through. It's at right now. It's late. Um, I don't necessarily want to be working on this anymore tonight. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold off doing any anything else to it until the morning. I will try to find some uh, some steel strings that I can put on this thing. Some acoustic steel strings, that is. And I got some glue on the from when I glued the top on. It's sticking out of here. There it goes. Um, but I'll see if I can find some. Uh, some steel strings for this thing and uh, get this all strung up tomorrow and intonated and uh, see what it sounds like so uh, we'll continue tomorrow morning with this alright it's uh, it's actually a week later now um, turns out that I did not have any um, acoustic strings steel strings I, I found a pack that I had um, some Martin strings, but it, there was uh, a G string missing out of there. So I think at some point I probably had an acoustic gig and my G string broke in the middle of the show, so I pulled a, a single string out of there to um, to fix it and just never got around to replacing the rest of the set. So um, usually because if I have a broken string on a guitar and I'm not in a show, I'll just change out all the strings. It makes no sense just to change one out. So. <clears throat> anyway, I had to order some new strings. They came yesterday, uh, and I got this thing strung up today. So I am now ready to uh, hear what this thing sounds like. Um, you can see the bridge is at a slant. That is because I have um, intonated the first string and the sixth string on here uh, to try to get the most intonation intonated uh, shape I could get on the bridge so um, hopefully everything will sound good but uh, that's what we're here to find out so sound too bad I mean it's it's a student guitar I'm not uh, I'm not expecting this thing to sound like a Taylor or a or a Martin but you know it does have uh, it's got a decent amount of, of resonance to it um, you know one of the things I was worried about was the uh, was the overall height of the strings and the action and uh, I'm not gonna lie, it, it's it's a little high. I may actually end up taking this thing back out of here and uh, sanding down. What I'll do is I'll put it on the belt sander and just sand down. I've got a lot to work with here too. I can probably take off a good eighth of an inch off the bottom of this thing and have a much better height on these strings and I think I may end up doing that. Um, but. Seeing how this thing is just going to be kind of a, a noodler, you know, a little noodler guitar I can keep around the house to dink around with. Um, I'm not going to be doing a lot of fret work up here at the top.
it you know it's I'm I'm happy with it. You know what? For like I said, you know I always I always try to um, put this stuff into perspective as far as you know there was five ten bucks spent on this thing on the guitar itself. Uh, another I think five dollars spent on the bridges that I got for it. Uh, you know the little insulated bridge pieces, and then you know just the I th oh I, I think I had I bought a dowel for it which I think was like three or four dollars. Um, and then just the time spent on it. So, I mean, the whole investment on this thing is, well, you know, if I'm being honest, it's still probably more than what the guitar is worth. But at the same time, you know, I like being able to, to kind of get this stuff put back together and, and working. So, I'm, uh, for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm, I, it, it, uh, it'll be a noodler that I'll be able to, to play around with when the mood strikes me. It doesn't sound bad at all. It, it didn't sound bad at all, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna chuck this this one up to success again. So um, I hope you liked the video. Uh, definitely click subscribe if you liked what you saw. Uh, leave a comment down below if uh, things are good. If, again, if you didn't like what you saw or you had a problem with what something I did, by all means let me know because uh, I like to learn from my mistakes. Um, so if you know something that I did wrong, please tell me. Again, be be polite. But um, other than that. Thanks for watching the video and uh, we will see you next time.